Welcome back. Uh, no, I hate it. <laughs> hey. <Whoa. laughs> Welcome back to the Sam's Detailing channel, and I've gone and purchased a Piaggio Ape. Now, you're probably wondering why I've gone and purchased a Tuk Tuk. I'll explain that in a bit. First, let's have a look around it. This is my Piaggio Ape TM P50. I don't know what any of that means apart from the 50 being 50cc because it's got this tiny little scooter engine somewhere in the bottom here. So yeah, this is it. Now you're probably wondering why have I bought this? Well, the plan is, <coughs> drum roll, to convert it into a Rockweiler merch van. So you, you've all seen the Sam's detailing like, box trailer I have. Well, we're kind of running out of space there and we just launched a load of Rockweiler merch and I'm like, where the hell are we gonna put this when we do shows? Well, convert the flatbed into a merch van and have little shelving on the back, paint this all black, have a little valve weld decal sticker here, copper wheels, make it look like a mini Piaggio wide body RWB. That's the plan. I don't know how we're going to do it in what is probably three months. It's a lot of work to do. Now, I bought it as a non-runner. It doesn't really matter if it doesn't run, but I personally reckon I can get this running. It's a tiny little scooter engine. What could be wrong with it? I could say famous last words, but typical Sam's detailing fashion. If you watch this channel, you know exactly how this is going to go down. Right, so I've gone with the flatbed option because I felt like that was the best option. It gives us like the most flexibility, nice open plan area. It's a bit tatty in places, it's a bit dented, it doesn't look grey, but the good thing with the flatbed is it comes off, we can, we can sort this out, this is like easy stuff. We can put decking, shelving, whatever we need to do, easy, nice and open plan. Regarding the rest of the area, so we've got um, a flat tyre, we've got a broken arch, plastic arch, uh, the window is held on by pretty premium high quality duct tape. The actual bodywork itself is pretty straight, not an issue. Just needs all sanding, a couple of battle mark scars. Other than that, the bodywork is pretty straight. It's nothing that you wouldn't expect on a 30 year old Piaggio Ape TMP50 to have these type of battle marks and scars. It's pretty normal, nothing too complicated. Paintwork doesn't really matter because we're going to sand it all down and probably paint it all black and make it look like the RWB. But I think it's in pretty good condition, pretty good nick. It's a good base to start with. I just don't know exactly what we need to do. So we need to think about a to-do list and start hammering it out because we only got like three, four months to do this. So we're going to do things a little bit different this time. We're actually going to have a plan. Now the aim is to stick to the plan. Whether that actually happens is a different situation, but we do have a plan. Right. To run this Piaggio project, we need commitment, structure, and organization. So that's why I've got a red marker to match the Piaggio. And I've got my whiteboard. We are going to list out what we're going to do, what we have to do, how we're going to do it. No, not how we're going to do it, just what we need to do. So I can have a rough idea. I ain't got a clue what I'm doing with this. This is literally on the fly. This only turned up like two weeks ago, and I've been in essence since then. So this is literally fresh. I have not made a plan. This is the plan. So the first things first, I think we should see if we can get the engine going, which needs a new battery. I'm not gonna spend much time on the engine. If it doesn't start and I can't get it going within a day, that's it. We move on to the actual important stuff. So number one, that's a terrible one. Number one, the Atares. <laughs> Have you seen that on Ali G? It's a short ad taxi. No, you see, see the batteries, engine, <laughs> question mark. Engine running, question mark. That's the first thing we're gonna do. The second thing, we need to, you see, I had an idea whilst filming, we could actually pull the flatbed off, 
give it to that fabricator guy in Sheffield that did my trailer brackets and he could probably remake that fresh instead of me hammering and smoothing this out. So flatbed uh, repair or new from Mr. Bracket is what I call him. So yeah, we need to decide, do we want to repair that or do we want to get Mr. Bracket to make us a new one? And then we need to decide, are we gonna put a base on it for slash decking? So number three is gonna be the paintwork. So we're gonna have to do the bodywork and converting it to black, which involves strip. De -de 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 -de. <laughs> strip it, fully respray it black. Then we need to do the wheels. So the wheels need to go copper and black. And I'll tell you, you can do that. Mr. AP Tires, he said he can do that, can't he? When he did the flipping RWB. So for the flatbed, then we need to decide the actual shelving. Uh, I'll get Mr. RCC involved in that. Mr. RCC Furniture. He did our shelves for the show. I reckon we can easily do this. I think the most time consuming and the strip, the bodywork, strip and repair. Decal studio. Amy, Miss Amy Decal. She can help with the uh, window, RWB, and potentially Rockweiler merch logo, Rocky merch. If she can get involved in the logos. Really, what we need to do is actually decide what we want to do with a flatbed. If it's going to be replicated, we need to get that done now. And then we get RCC furniture involved as soon as possible so he can just start building the shelves whilst we're doing the painting and all the other stuff. Mm, we're going to have to do multiple things at the same time here. It's actually a bit harder than I thought. Okay, so let's run through this. Number one, we sort out the engine. Get the engine running. Number two, sort out the flatbed. Are we gonna fit a brand new one on there? Are we gonna take the old one off or are we gonna fix up that old one and make it look brand new? Number three, body work. A full strip down, sand, fill, make it all smooth and then we're gonna paint it black. Number four, wheels. Now that's pretty easy. We're just gonna take the wheels off, get them repainted black in the center. Copper on the outside, AP tires, two, three days, easy. Number five, shelving. Now this one's a bit more complicated. We first need to design and spec up the shelving, get an idea of exactly what we want. Then we need to get Mr. RCC Furniture involved at Kellam Island so he can actually build it for us and then we can actually fix it onto the tuk-tuk. So number six is the decals. Now Amy's gonna hook us up with that uh, decal studio. She can do the banner for us to make the little Rawwell banner on the front. And obviously we want the little Rockweiler uh, decals on the side. She will sort us that out, that's easy. Just like that, we have a replacement battery. Let's open it up. Yeah, that's the same. Let's just transfer this over and see if we can start the tuk-tuk. Okay, so need to screw in the earth and then that will just, the positive will just clip in. So just bolt this earth in. Right, so that's the earth bolted in. Get that into its position. Okay, so plug in the positive. I think that's in. I believe this goes here, which I'm making up. I'm not 100% sure. Oh, I think that's done. Is that in? That's in. Okay, what's that? Okay, whatever. Let's try turning on the ignition. <laughs> oh, okay, we get okay, something's happening. Ah. How'd you start it? I'm not sure. So, that's neutral. To me, it sounds like this. There's no fuel. Oh, that's empty, that is. Let's get some fuel. Let's get the petrol. Where have I got petrol?
why was it it was moving forward on the starter? <laughs> You know what, let's force it to start. Oh, that's loose. Oh. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remove the air filter cover and see if we can just force the engine to start by spraying a bit of carb cleaner in there. Could work. It may just need like the initial going and then it'll be fine. Or it could be a knackered spark plug. You know what, let's just leave it like that. See if we can start it. Okay. <sighs> okay. It won't even start now. I think I twisted the connection for the starter. <sighs> we'll tinkle with it next week, see if we can get it started. What does it matter, but... Uh. Right, a new fresh day, uh, a chance to have a think about this. And uh, I think the first things I'm gonna do is try and get this engine to start. I really wanna see if it runs. So let's pull out the spark plug. Let's do the basic checks to see why it's not starting. So spark plug, we'll look at the air filter, see if we can notice anything obvious. So let's inspect. Right, we've got missing bolts. Uh, I'm gonna put this on jack stands. Oh. <laughs> Let's check it from here. <laughs> this is so dangerous. Stable enough. Let's take a look at what we're working with. <clears throat> what? <laughs> oh, there it is, I found it, okay. Oh. Okay, spark plug's right here. So what's that, that's, that's the filter? That must be the air filter, which is missing a bunch of bolts. Knackered spark plug. That doesn't help. What's that? Oh, that's the air intake. Okay, right. I understand. Okay. Let's crack out the spark plug and see what it looks like. Okay, you see this? That's your spark plug. I've never seen it. We're so close to top of the head I can't even get a socket on that but that can't be the original spark plug why would it be like that how am I supposed to get the spark plug out with a spanner or an open and I need one of those o2 sockets but that who's gonna make it who would have designed it like that it's not a 24 mil for sure 24 mil is way too big 24 mil on a spark that's not right <laughs> Got it. Champion spark plug. Completely wet with fuel. Okay. We need to see if this gives a spark. So we've got a spark, we've got fuel, we've got air. I think this is going to be something complicated, like the carburetor. Because it's got carbs, this thing. Okay. I'm going to put a pause on the engine. <laughs> Told you it wasn't going to be that easy. That engine is not starting anytime soon. Let's move on to the deck. What are we going to do with the deck? So let's see how the deck comes off. 
Oh no. Mate, that's never gonna come off. Unless you take it, that's no, no. Oh, no chance. Okay, we need to come up with a second plan now. It's part of the fucking body. Sometimes you have the suspension, rails, and then the deck sitting on top of it. So you can just lift up the deck and you don't have to really touch all the suspension and stuff. This is all like, you have the rails welded to the deck and on the rails is all the engine mounts, suspension mounts, all of that stuff. So you can't just lift off the deck. You can take the engine off, but then you'll have all the rails. They're not gonna be able to fabricate all the mounting points and everything. We need to use this deck. Should have looked at this before buying it. Why is everything so hard? Should we just end the video here in absolute panic? What can we do? What can we do? Think. Matt off though. I don't like the texture. But once you got the paint and the lacquer on there, I think. <laughs> okay. To be honest, I should have known this was gonna turn into a nightmare. So, this is the common situation. Number one, the engine, the spark plug, I can't get that engine running. I'm not really sure what's up with it. I don't have much experience in scooter type engines. I took the spark plug out, it is sparking, you saw that. We've got fresh fuel in there. I have a feeling it's going to be something carburetor related or something like that, something really complicated because someone has been in there. Number two, the deck. The deck is an absolute disaster. I was personally hoping we'd be able to just take the deck off, get it replicated and get a brand new one on there, cut the time right down for the labour. Nope, we're going to have to use that deck. And I want to get this nice and smooth and looking spick and span. So that means just it's going to be a lot of bodywork, a lot of filler, sanding. Oh, it's the murk all over again, and it's red. So yeah, I guess the next video is just gonna be a lot of body work. So stay tuned. This episode is all about sanding, filling, painting, all that body work stuff that we apparently love to do. So time to make this red tuk-tuk black, and we haven't got much time, so let's get on with it. But first, let me show you around it. I was very perverted. <laughs> TMP50, 50 being 50cc, because it's got a tiny little scooter engine, which is as big as my... Bicep. That was so loser. Eh? <laughs>